This was the summer of 2009's reboot, or relaunch, of the Star Trek movie franchise. Prior to going to see this, I knew of Star Trek. I had never watched the series. I had no stance on it. Uh, I, I think some of my family would watch a couple of the movies when we used to get together during summer vacations when I was a kid. I never stayed very long. I never got into it back then. Um, but I'd never given it enough of a try to say whether I would have been a fan or not. This movie was so amazing that it completely won me over into wanting to see Star Trek, starting from the original series. And I have now seen many of the original series episodes. I've not yet seen Next Generation or any of the others. Uh, I'm sure I'll pick them up sometime. I like the original series. I actually liked it so much that I saved up some money, uh, put away about $10 a month, and when I had enough to cover the expense, I bought my electric blue Star Trek scientist robe that you see me wearing in many of the live videos I make. So this movie starts with an event that changes the original story and timeline of the original Star Trek and characters. But all the characters as they're played, as the actors portray them, are spot on um, representations from the original series. And most of these actors were very new to this. Apart from Leonard Nimoy in his final performance as Spock, uh, the actor who was the biggest name at the time was Eric Bana, who played the Romulan Captain Nero. Uh, he also played the character of Hector in the 2004 Troy movie, and in this year, 2017, uh, Uther Pendragon in King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. And that was a portrayal of Uther that I liked even though the movie as a whole failed to be the Arthurian legend revival that I was hoping for. Um, as far as I know, Star Trek had not before given us a young Captain Kirk. Uh, in, the, in the second movie, The Wrath of Khan, we learned that Kirk had beaten the unbeatable test, the Kobayashi Maru, by changing its roles, by cheating. But we didn't see that happen, or how he did just that. In this movie, we see it, and it's awesome. And then he's called in by the school board to explain himself. Uh, he challenges the very nature of the test, saying it's unfair. And he has a point. Then we get Spock laying out the true purpose of the test, and I get it. I'm totally on board with him on what the test is supposed to teach, but at the same time you can't help but smile at Kirk's creativity, and Chris Pine plays an amazing young adult, James T. Kirk. Um, I heard he, he felt his uh, first audition was horrible, but uh, he, he was watching the, um, uh, the original Kirk, uh, William Shatner, and... Um, I think originally, among other things, he felt it was too arrogant. Uh, so, but but having him as much younger works better when it's you know kind of a fusion of arrogance and humor, um, and it totally works. I like uh, I, I like him talking to uh, Captain Pike. Um, there was, in the original series, a, uh, a pilot episode that was created long before the, uh, the, the series was, was actually aired, and that was lost for some time and eventually got added uh, into um, one of the re-releases. You can see it now, it's, um, and it's one of the least, like, Star Trek episodes. It's almost... Uh, it's almost a Twilight Zone episode, uh, but Captain Pike's in that, and when the, when the original series came, they changed to Captain Kirk. 
uh, and Pike was his predecessor. But it's really cool to see the uh, the the changing of the captain, the transition between Pike and Kirk. I really love that in this movie. This movie scored so high, and um, the uh, the Spocks, Leonard Nimoy, uh, who plays an older Spock, and uh, Zachary Quinto, younger Spock. I love how that turned out. You can really believe that the young and older Spocks are the same person, just earlier and later in their lives. You don't always buy that when you have different actors playing the same character at different stages, um, especially in the same movie or series, but you totally buy it here. Um, Ohura irritated me a little bit. It's not, it's not that bad in this movie, and uh, I, I, I do, I do like the portrayal, but uh, it, you'll see this in science fiction and fantasy and other genre movies um, sometimes. Th there will be this uh, a female female character, female member of the crew, uh, or whatever team is being put together, um, and they'll have a lot of like really high accomplishments listed. Like uh, in here, it's uh, her recognition of a huge collection of alien languages. Um, I don't know uh, the maximum number of languages any one person can learn, but uh, it's ridiculous. Like, all three uh, dialects of um, Romulan, as, as well as others, um, it's a little too perfect. Like, a uh, top of the class and everything, but during the course of the adventure, they don't do all that much. Um, it, it's not quite a faux action girl, but um, you, you, it does it does get irritating when you see it um, because you think someone truly at the you know at the at the height of their abilities uh, would do more than that. It, it's it's like the they're, they're trying to build uh, an impressive female character, but she didn't never really performs that impressively. Um, not too bad in this movie, but uh, and I did like uh, Ohura and Spock, but you do notice it. Um, so, apart from that minor annoyance, uh, everyone in this movie is awesome. Kirk's awesome. Spock's awesome. Pike's awesome. Sulu is awesome. Scotty's awesome. Uh, oh, there's an interesting part where uh, Spock and uh, Scotty are talking about uh, this equation uh, for. Um, I forget exactly what it is for uh, space or dimensional travel or something, and um, there's. And the the equation comes up. Uh, they figure it out, and uh, Scotty says, "I never thought uh, to um, to figure in that uh, space was the thing that was moving. Uh, space time. Now there are uh, hypotheses and mathematics of uh, the, the way to." Um, the way to achieve uh, interstellar space, because the distances are just ridiculously vast, uh, is actually to uh, to create a, a device uh, that molds space itself. Um, I I've watched documentaries on it. I'm not that kind of scientist. I'm not a theoretical physicist. I can't explain how it works, um, but it, uh, it it seems mathematically plausible. Whether we'll ever actually have the technology to do that, who knows. But this movie is awesome. It is even um, though it's an alternate timeline, 
uh, it really barely changes anything from the show because all throughout the film they're working towards building up the characters as you see them in the original series. So you could totally use this movie as a launching off point to get into Star Trek and then start watching the series. It's amazing and uh, money's a little tight right now until uh, Gen Con, until I get back from Gen Con this summer. Um, but I am definitely buying this DVD for my home video collection.